Hello everybody. Uh, today I'm going to put in a second alternator in my 2001 Ford F350 Super Duty with diesel engine, 7.3 liter. This is a 135 amp alternator. Alright, so this is the first part. It's an idler pulley. It's an extra one we have to, have to add for the dual setup. And here's the part number. F8TZ8678FA. Here's the second part. Just the bracket that the alternator mounts right on. And here's the part number. F8TZ10A313-AA. You notice the part has a different number on it. Right here. F8 TE. 10039AB. I think that's the old number. This is the one you want, the number. Then you have to get an extra long dual alternator belt, JK81381. And you need some bolts. Um, seems to me I only needed five of these things, but they came in packs of four. So these are N60606868. S437. And I bought a um, 135 amp alternator. The original one on my truck burned up. Uh, this is a rebuilt one. It came with this pulley on it. Um, I put a smaller pulley. Got this uh, through the local alternator shop. I can't remember. It's, it's the smallest one I could get. 58 millimeters, I think. And you need a wiring harness. You can make your own if you want to. This looks like a six gauge wire. If you have one of these plugs, and maybe if you got a junkyard alternator and got the plug, you probably could do without the alternator. You're going to have to put in a fusible link though on the end. I have no idea how many amps this fusible link is supposed to take, but the alternator is 135. What you want to prevent is just this thing burning up. You want to prevent this burning up. So it's, it's going to be more amps than the alternator can put out. Now this hose, this is around the, this is the around the uh, belt hose. This is not exactly necessary, but you've got to take the belt off anyway. And to do that, you've got to take off the hose. Here's the numbers. F81Z8260CA. Now you can see the original hose goes under the belt, which means you've got to take this off. It's full of antifreeze to get to that belt. This goes under the belt, clamps in right there. So anyway, you'll see that in a minute. Now down in here, there's a little tiny space down in there that's just the right size for the alternator. You might actually see it better from underneath. Let me give it a shot and see what happens. And this light, I can't see it, but maybe when I put this on the computer, you'll be able to see it. So here's the around the belt hose installed. You can see it goes around the belt. Now, when you install it, make sure you get, get it twisted on this fitting, twisted, so that it stays clear of the belt. You want to have a clearance right in here, otherwise your belt will cut a hole in the in the two um, the hose, which isn't good. Now, actually, I had to take the belt off to get that in there, but I wanted to put the belt back on to show you how to do it, how to take it off. There's a there's a breaker bar here in the idler pulley. You just twist that, and it takes the tension off of it. All right, so this is take two. I can't hold this camera and the piece at the same time. But this is the orientation that this bracket goes down in there. This, um, right on the, you can see this bolt hole here. That bolt hole right there goes way down there. I'm just gonna get a light on it. So you can see, I think you can see it. Yeah. 
I way down here um, by the oil pan there's a the battery cable bolts to the block negative battery cable and there's a transmission cooling lines and power the positive cable going to the starter um, that's actually a stud so that has to be disassembled and you bolt that bracket right there the second piece goes here it's hard to see it's underneath that bracket we put a laser on it son of a bitch you need four hands so right here is the other bolt and here's the third bolt all right here's the bracket it's loosely installed you can see the nuts aren't tight um, I think I'm going to pull it back out, bolt the alternator to it. Oh, well, that's going to be a tight squeeze. And uh, put it back in with the alternator bolted on. Might save a little work. This is the, this flange bolt, stud bolt, is uh, what came out of the bottom. That's what held that negative battery terminal on. This right here is standard half inch, uh, half inch standard thread. What you need a bolt is about this long to replace it, or a stud. A stud would work even better. Um, the directions I got off the internet said you use this bolt here. That's the same. That's the number that I got from Ford. Obviously, that's not going to work. I think a half-inch stud would work really well, and you could put a nut on it then. That way, you could line up those uh, the negative terminal and that bracket, um, the transmission cooler bracket.